John Hill is a Michigan State fanatic and the former higher ed evangelist, evangelist sorry, at LinkedIn. He has a wealth of experience and endless connection. John believes that changing the world can be more than just a hyperbole, and building relationships and connecting with people is at the core of a working world. So without further ado, we'll set the stage for John Hill. All right, guys, it's an intimate crowd, so I'm going to pick on you guys as we go along, but I'll make it friendly, I promise. I introduced myself, I think, to pretty much all of you guys already. So we're like family, which is a cool thing. Uh, I um, uh, was actually presenting in New York City last night, and uh, I was there from 5.30 to 6.30. Storms rolled through, and I was supposed to fly out to fly back to Boston and then fly out here in the morning. My flights to Boston got canceled. Um, so then I was trying to rearrange flights to Richmond, but they were doing ground stops at JFK and LaGuardia. So it looked like I wasn't going to get out this morning. So I actually ended up jumping in a car and driving through the night to get here. So if I pause at any moment, know that it's part fatigue, um, but it meant a lot for me to be here. Um, I've now given about a thousand presentations in the last 10 years and I've never missed one. And I wasn't going to let Longwood be the first one that I missed. So did everything I could to be here. Um, I am a Boston kid through and through. You'll pick up a little bit of my accent as I go along. I, I was a spokesperson for LinkedIn, and they essentially homogenized me and made it so that I didn't have that Boston accent as much as I used to. Uh, but uh, I'm a Boston kid through and through, and I just wanted to show you guys how Boston I am, relate a personal story for you guys, and then we'll get going into how to develop an effective network. So. I'm a Boston guy, so Boston that I get to hang out with some of the icons in the Boston market. That's the Dunkin' Donuts mascot. If you guys have ever been in the Northeast, Dunkin' Donuts is an institution, especially in Boston. I take my coffee a large regular. It's essentially two creams, two sugars, um, which is not healthy for me, but I do it. My wife is a Starbucks fan, so we have like a divided house, and we work through that. It's cool. Uh, I'm so Boston that when I was this age, my mom used to take me to Harvard and MIT for behavioral studies. Not that there was anything wrong with me, but she thought the intelligence on those campuses would rub off. Uh, if I have any idiosyncrasies, you can blame those schools. Um, so Boston, how many of you guys have seen the movie The Departed? So it's uh, Jack Nicholson, Leonardo DiCaprio. Uh, it's a Martin Scorsese film. Uh, it's talking about essentially an Irish crime family type scenario. Uh, I'm so Boston that a scene from that film was actually filmed in my grandmother's house. That's about as Boston as it gets. That's actually Leonardo DiCaprio knocking on the door that my dad went through for the first 18 years of his life. And that's my grandparents' place. They lived on the top floor of this triple-decker. So to kind of paint a picture for you, um, this area that he did this in is in South Boston. It's a little enclave called Sabin Hill. They affectionately call it Stab and Kill. Um, it's not the best neighborhood. The reason Martin Scorsese picked the area to do this film is because it wasn't gentrified. And it kind of looked gritty and like non-time specific, so it was a good place to kind of showcase a tough Irish mob type scenario. My grandparents were from Ireland, came over on the boat. Uh, my grandfather was a postal worker. My grandmother was a stay-at-home mom. They had six kids. The eight of them lived in a two-bedroom top floor of this triple-decker, so it's three apartments stacked up on each other. The area that my, grad, my dad grew up in is not known for uh, putting out Rhodes Scholars. Um, if you graduated from high school, it was celebrated. If you graduated from high school, your opportunities were to go in the military, uh, religion, or the labor union. And that was about it. At 14 years old, my dad decided that that was not the direction for him. And I've got a 15-year-old, so this story is amazing because he would never do anything I'm about to show you. Uh, my dad started selling fruit and newspapers at the train station in his neighborhood, in Savin Hill, the T station, to commuters going into work to pay his way through a private high school, Boston College High School. My grandparents fought essentially against it because they felt like um, you know, education didn't really matter as much as my dad was trying to push for it. Uh, he ended up graduating from BC High, saved up enough money to go to one year at Northeastern. He was going to study engineering. Ran out of money, and as a Vietnam War era, thought he was going to get drafted. He ended up uh, enlisting in the Air Force. Um, fortunately for us, he ended up measuring uh, mountain or weather patterns on a mountaintop in uh, Burns, Oregon. There were six other guys up there, so I'm sure they got to know each other very well. There was a small library there. He read every book in the library. Post-graduation, he utilized the GI Bill 
to get his degree from UMass Boston. While he was there, he started some efforts for veterans trying to assimilate back into universities post-Vietnam experience and uh, caught wind of some political luminaries in the marketplace. Um, those folks thought he had political promise and thought he was a little raw. He came from inner city Boston and wanted him to get a little bit more polished. So they pushed him to apply for uh, Ivy League MBAs. He applied to every one of the Ivy League MBA schools and he heard from one. So he uh, leveraged the only relationships that he had in the neighborhood. And at this point he has me and my sister, he's married to my mom. Uh, he um, leverages the, the rail union, the people who work at Amtrak. Uh, to get free train tickets to go down to Philadelphia, he's going to interview at University of Pennsylvania Wharton Business School. So he uh, jumps on the train, ends up in New York City at Penn Station. Uh, he's there for about a two-hour layover, and uh, hanging out there, some guy in a three-piece suit carrying golf clubs comes down and sits next to him. Uh, guy turns to my dad, and remember, this is like late 70s, so that suit was probably awesome. But uh, my, uh, this guy turns to my dad and says, uh, do you golf? My dad grew up in inner city Boston, was in the military, never golfed a day in his life. But like any good pre-MBA student would do, he's like, yeah, of course I golf. Starts the conversation. Through the conversation, my dad realizes this guy is a pretty big deal. At the end of it, the guy gives him his business card, says, if I can ever help you out, let me know. He was the VP of marketing for the bank in New York in Manhattan. So my dad goes down to Wharton and realizes essentially the, um, the MBA that he's applied for, the program, is Wharton's first executive recruitment or executive uh, MBA program. You need to be gainfully employed, essentially sponsored to go through the program. My dad works at the post office at that point. Pretty sure the US government isn't gonna support him for his education. So uh, he goes back the next day to the Bank of New York, Manhattan. This is pre 9-11, literally walks into this guy's office, says, you said you'd help me out if I ever needed anything. Um, I need a job. Guy loved his moxie, hired him on the spot. Uh, and my dad relocated our family from one beautiful area, Savin Hills, Stab and Kill, to another one, uh, Trenton, New Jersey, if you guys haven't visited. It's like the East Coast Riviera, it's beautiful. Um, and uh, we end up uh, there for three years as my dad works at the Bank of New York, goes to Wharton, does kind of a circle. Post-graduation, he ends up in the automotive industry, works at Federal Mogul. Uh, does that for a while, um, works with the big three, the automotive uh, companies in Michigan, starts making a name for himself as a networker, and a company in Canada reaches out to him and says, hey, we want you um, to start a company on our behalf. We'll seed you with money to build your own business called Magna International. Uh, my dad does that for 30 years, runs a successful business, ends up um, retiring. My parents are snowbirds. My parents live in Ponce Inlet in Florida. Uh, during the winters and up in Michigan during the summers. Very smart about how they navigate weather. Um, the cool part of this story though is how education transforms lives. My dad's five brothers and sisters, one went to university, um, had 17 kids, four went to university. My dad had four kids, uh, at least of which has a bachelor's, three with master's, one with a PhD, married four kids with master's degrees, three Ivy League degrees between them. I'm a huge believer that education transforms lives. You guys are representative of that. This at Longwood is one part of it. What I'm about to show you is another part of education, how to navigate relationships. We'll go deeply into that. But I think back to my dad, he really benefited from serendipity, a lot of luck, and a lot of hard work. Um, and it opened up the door uh, for him to have a successful career. You guys have tools in front of you that are way better than anything he had in front of him at that time. I'm going to start with the end in mind. I want you guys to remember three things. Number one, build a network before you need it so it's there when you do. You're in college right now. You have this beautiful opportunity to spend time building up a network. And you've got a great alumni base that you can attach into to help you. And I'll show you how to leverage that, I promise you. The second thing that I want you guys to think about is to build a quality relational network, not a quantity relational network. It's about the depth of the relationships that get you into where you want to go. And I'm going to go deeper into that in a little bit, really share how you can uh, surmise what a good quality relationship is. The third one, and it's been under attack lately, which I think is uh, BS. I don't think it's cool. Um, I think you guys should dream big. You have so many career paths that have come out of this university that you can follow or you can carve your own career paths. Uh, I was a higher education evangelist at LinkedIn. 
I'm now the network catalyst at a company called Techstars. We build tech companies. We have 750 companies in our portfolio. I cross-connect our founders with each other and mentors and investors. I never could have envisioned doing this when I graduated from school. And there aren't many people that do this type of work. You can literally do whatever you want if you work towards those means. And we'll go through some of that in a bit. So I'm highly interruptible. If you guys want to stop me at any time, we can go deeper and deeper. You're not going to throw me off, I promise. Um, but I'm going to jump into LinkedIn. I'm curious, by a show of hands, how many of you do not have a profile on LinkedIn? All right, by the end of this, I promise you, you will be doing it. I can guarantee it. You guys want a job post-graduation? This is the place to do it, all right? All right, so let's jump into LinkedIn. Um, at the end of this presentation, I'm also going to show you three networking tools that I think are going to um, come to life and be big for you guys in the next three to five years. So I'll put you guys ahead of the curve of what's coming down the pipeline. But we'll start with LinkedIn. Um, LinkedIn now has 400 million users, uh, highly active. Um, I joined LinkedIn in 2011 and I uh, had a pretty good run. Um, they're building out the Higher Education Initiative with a handful of other folks. I uh, worked with colleges and universities all over the world. Uh, I was fortunate enough, I think this is the 179th university I've spoken at. Um, I've spoken at 91 of the top 100 U.S. institutions, 143 of the uh, Global 400 based on the Shanghai rankings. Also spoke at 110 conferences in higher education um, while I was there. So I get you guys and what higher ed is trying to do to help you uh, find opportunities post-graduation. It's a pretty good tool uh, to help you navigate uh, and get to where you want to go. So I'm going to start with um, how I started utilizing LinkedIn. Uh, it was just a way to keep in contact with my professional network. So if I come up here into connections, it's going to take me into all the people I've connected with at a first level. They're essentially like my friends on Facebook. Um, and then LinkedIn has started doing something over the last couple of years that I think is invaluable for you guys. It's starting to showcase people who are on my first level connections. These are essentially like my friends. Uh, changes that are happening off their profile in 24 hour increments. So this refreshes every day. And it shows five things. People who have had birthdays, very similar to Facebook. But the four other ones I think are important for you guys, and I'll show you how I utilize them. They show people who have had work anniversaries. So I can shoot a note to somebody and say in my network, hey, congratulations that I, I see you've been at that company for three years now. Wow, time's flown type thing. It's just a little piece to say that I'm paying attention to them that pays off in the long run, I promise you. Number two, I get to see how people have moved from one area. It'll show somebody moving from Boston to New York. What I do there is I'll uh, connect the people who have moved from one location to another to people I know in that market. And I'll say, hey, um, you know, these are good people. I think they'll help you out. Again, I'm paying into my network a little bit. It'll showcase people who have been mentioned in the news. And as you guys progress in careers, some of your contacts are going to do things that are newsworthy. It's an opportunity for me to share that on things like Twitter or Facebook or on LinkedIn to celebrate their achievements. And then uh, it showcases um, people who have had new jobs. And I'll do one of two things on that. If I know people at the company, I'll do introductions to those people, to the people I know at the company. Uh, and I'll congratulate them on it. And I'll show you how easy it is. Uh, we'll pick somebody up here, Kirsten, who uh, worked on some of the innovation initiatives when I was in uh, Michigan. I can say congrats for her new role. You are the best, five exclamation points. When I hit uh, comment on that, it sends her a note. That easy. I spend 10 minutes a day every morning going through this, congratulating people or trying to connect them with other folks. That's it. With that 10 minutes a day, I probably reach I don't know, in a given year, 3,000 people with personalized notes celebrating the milestones that they're hitting. It's such a simple thing, but it's a way to stay attached to your network. Now, I can also search all my first level connections. I'll get a little deeper into what connections mean on LinkedIn. Whoops. But if I come down here, these are all the people I'm connected with. I can search it and look for specific people. So I'm going to look at one of my friends. His name's Brent Grinna. Uh, Brent's a serial entrepreneur. entrepreneur. He starts a company like every six days. This is one of those guys you love to be attached to. He's high velocity. For you guys, this is the type of guy who creates opportunity. I met Brent when he was building his latest company called Evertrue uh, about four years ago when I was at LinkedIn. He had three employees at the time. They now are closing in on, I think, 75, 80 employees. 
Um, he uh, connects university databases to social cues. So if you guys like something that Longwood does on Facebook, he can connect it to the backend database for the alumni and development folks, kind of see what your interests are. So they work with about 400 uh, universities uh, at this point, keep growing. And uh, he does some pretty cool things on his profile. Um, one, he's got a good picture and a background image, showcase the work environment that they're in. Uh, second thing he does, which I think is going to be more and more important for you guys coming down the pipeline, he shows his subject matter exper expertise. Uh, he's what's called an SME. Uh, what an SME means is essentially people go to him for knowledge. They're trying to figure out how to do certain things. He's really knowledgeable about alumni. All of you guys are going to develop your voice in what you're known for professionally down the road. Utilize that voice to project to other people so they can see how your depth of knowledge is in that area. And he uses his profile on LinkedIn to showcase this. You can all blog off your profile on LinkedIn. So that's one thing he does. I go down a little bit further. He's got a summary of who he is and what he's about. So he's sharing with people um, his narrative, his story of who he is professionally. He's also attaching rich media. So he can put video here, he can put PowerPoint, uh, he can put different um, uh, representations of who he is that give you a better view of you as a professional outside of a resume. So you guys have done some work in class, right? You've done PowerPoints, you've done papers, um, you've probably done some video work at some point. You can attach that information to your profile to showcase the work you've done in the classroom as it relates professionally. Go ahead. Is there a place to use the uh, I always tell, I Uploading? Put up, yeah, and it says put a URL in, and that's where I get confused. Yeah, there's an upload you can do on PDFs. Um, Ryan, I'll shoot that to you later because I can't remember what it is, but in that way you can attach. Um, but double check, see if it will take it off your desktop. Because they've been working on that for a while. I thought that was already fixed. So it was an interesting, good question. I appreciate that. All right, so if I scroll down a little bit further, you can see his experience. Um, I'm going to take this from two different lenses. For you guys, don't talk about the details of what you do. Talk about what you achieved in the roles that you were in. Showcase the good work. Create a story about yourself professionally in this space, and that's what he does there. If you read it, he's telling what his company is, sharing that information. He's going in depth. From an alumni perspective, you can start to see how Brent got into the position of being a CEO of his company. You can see the steps he took from university to this point, and it gives you guys an opportunity to start to follow those footsteps, follow that pathway. Now, if I go down a little bit further, LinkedIn allows your network to endorse you for skills and expertise. Um, these are lightweight recommendations that you have these skills and expertise professionally. Uh, by a show of hands, how many of you have been endorsed for a skill or expertise? All right, so a pretty good amount of you. Um, a lot of you haven't figured out what you're known for professionally. This is your network giving you an idea of what they think about you professionally. If I had Brent here right now, he would tell you he's known for entrepreneurship, leadership, startups, fundraising. It's the world he's in right now and his network is reinforcing it. If you don't know who you are professionally, this is a way for your network to start to let you know um, who you're about. And you can use this in your summary. You can use this in an introductory email. You can use this in your elevator pitch as you uh, start to reach out professionally going forward. So I'm going to go back up to the top, and I think that this is one of those differentiators. You're going to connect with people professionally, and just as an aside, because I'm not going to go into it in depth, um, customize the messages when you try to connect with people here. It gives you the option on the desktop, not on mobile, not on your phone. So make sure that you put it in context why you want to connect with somebody, what value you bring to the table, what your expectations are of the relationship. It at least gives somebody information about why, or why not they should connect with you. Um, but I'm a huge believer of capturing conversations around the relationships you have. How many of you guys want a job post-graduation? All right, you're going to have to talk to a lot of people to get that job. And so you might as well start to capture those conversations so that you know you can refer back to them later. And so off profiles, and this is free for everybody who's on LinkedIn, you can keep notes in this little relational area on all your connections. And you can say something like, on 311, Brent and I talked about starting a biz. Brent moves quick, so on 312, we started a biz. 24-hour business plan was brilliant, so on 313, we failed. Wah, wah. 
if I save this to his profile, I'm the only one who can view those notes. Nobody else on LinkedIn can view that information. I'm capturing the conversation around the professional relationships I have. As you talk with people, as you talk to alumni, professionals in the field, as you connect with them on LinkedIn, keep notes here so you can refer back to it on the next conversation three, six, nine months later. And you have that information. I still do this from five years ago. I'll fly into a city like Phoenix and I'll look at my connections that I've talked to before and I'll catch up on the conversation based on the information I've captured off this profile. Now, another really cool thing I can do is I can set up tags that allow me to search more effectively on here. So I can add Brent um, to, right now I've got him selected as a good person for entrepreneurship. If I click on this, it will show me all the people that I've set up as good people for entrepreneurship. For you, you can start to set up all the people who you're trying to cultivate as relationships as you go into the job search. So people you've interviewed with, alumni you've talked to. And that way you have them all listed, very easy to access uh, as you go along. Now, I'm going to show you one trick. And Link LinkedIn is the only social network that allows you to do this. If we go back to connections, if I have all those notes on the profiles, if I have um, all the first level connections that I have uh, and I want to get that information outside of LinkedIn, if I hit this export LinkedIn connections, I can put all of my first level connections and take them out of LinkedIn. So now I have all the people I'm connected with, the companies they're in, the positions they're in, the industries they're in, the notes that I've taken on them in an Excel spreadsheet. That's essentially what a CSV file is. And then I can do whatever I want with it. So then you can access it and you can start to use it to see what companies you're doing well with that you're trying to connect with, which ones you need to build more relational capital with. You can start to see the strength of your network and the weakness of your network and then accentuate it from there. So it's a way to start to pull this information in, out and do whatever you want with it. Now this is all well and good. Um, as you develop uh, connections, you wanna be able to search them. So we're gonna go actually into the 400 million people Go up to this advanced search uh, button over here. I'm going to start to take you into search. But before I do that, uh, I want to kind of play on a scenario to give you guys an idea of how LinkedIn works. So you and I are not connected on LinkedIn. But say you're connected to her and she's connected to her. Once you and I connect on LinkedIn, you become a connection. You become a connection of a connection, second level connection. You become a connection of a connection of a connection, third level connection. You and I join a group together. We can see everybody in that group. This becomes my relational network. That's how LinkedIn works. It's degrees of separation, all right? But each one of you offers different things. So as a direct relationship, and remember what I said at the beginning, we want a quality relationship, not a quantity relationship. Um, you're very important. Uh, so say I went to Longwood too. Uh, you and I went to class together, um, used to hang out, study. Uh, you know, we used to, um, do organizational things. Post-graduation, we got married, not to each other, because my wife would be really upset about that. Uh, but uh, stayed in touch professionally as we kind of grew along, right? We know each other well. All right, say you've built the same relationship with her. You're connected to her, I'm connected to you. If I ask you to connect me with her, are you likely to do it, pass a message along? Are you likely to respond back because you know her well? Yes. Right, so what we learned at LinkedIn is these people this little triangle right here is highly effective of getting you to where you want to go. Uh, the CEO of LinkedIn, Reid Hoffman, wrote a book about uh, essentially how to navigate career paths now. What he classified you as is the most important person in the room right now. What's your name again? Susan. Susan. Everybody give Susan a round of applause. She's, that was golf clap. Let's try that one more time. All right. So Susan is a connection of a connection. In LinkedIn terms, she's classified as a weak tie. The vast majority of job opportunities are going to come out of weak ties for you guys. It's not who you know, but who they know that creates the introductions. And it's simple numbers. If I have 100 connections here, it's 10,000 connections here. Not exact, but pretty close, right? So this 100 people that I know well can leverage 10,000 people for me that they know well if we do this well. What's your name again? Lynn? Everybody give Lynn a round of applause. All right, I did that to make you feel good because you're actually less important in this process, not in life, but just in this process. First level, second level, third level connection. If I try to reach you through this, these people 
don't know us in common. Like, they know each other, right? So it's harder to get out to a third level connection. So within LinkedIn, I want you guys to focus on your primary connections and your connections of connections, second level connection. You are important, by the way, though. If we join a group together, you and I can now see everybody in the group. That's a like interest. That's something we can leverage, and I'm gonna get back to that in just a second. But this is how LinkedIn works. So we're gonna start with searching the world. We're gonna look at all 400 million users. We're gonna look at first level connection, second level connection, group, third and everyone else. And then who's the number one person you'd wanna connect with in any company? Who's the ultimate decision maker? Huh? No. Gatekeepers. I love HR people, but they're gatekeepers. CEO, right? And I'm not telling you guys all to connect to, into CEOs. We're just using this as an example. Uh, we'll get back into your job search in a second. But let's start with CEOs. And what I'm trying to do here is network my way into a job. CEOs can make decisions, right? Right off the bat. And if I search this on LinkedIn, out of the 400 million users, 3.2 million of them have CEO on their profile as a title. So this is either, either current or past CEOs. Now, the past were abject failures, so we're only gonna look at the current CEOs, and I'm absolutely kidding. Uh, and we now have 2.5 million um, CEOs. What university do we wanna check? That, that was not a, a trick question, I promise you guys. <laughs> All right, so let's look at Longwood. And now I've got the 119 CEOs that have graduated from this university. Name a city, any city. Charlotte, Charlotte that's too easy. Let's do the beautiful people of LA. Uh, it's the only zip code I can remember, 90210. So <laughs> let's pop this in real quick. Nine zero two one zero. If I do a search there, I've got this one CEO that graduated from Longwood that uh, is in uh, LA. He's the CEO of Leo's Body Camp. That is very intriguing and vague. Um, <laughs> but I can see Leonard Leo Relaford uh, is there. He's a third level connection, connection of connection of connection. So he may not be ideal. So let's bring this uh, to the East Coast, um, the city that brought me troubles yesterday. Let's look at New York City, 1001. And we've got a few more. So we've got five people. And they're all third level connections of mine. All right, we're gonna take this out. I wanna get to second level connections. All right, so let's do, we don't care. All right, so we're back to the 116, but what I just showed you is there are five CEOs in New York, there's one CEO in LA that graduated from this institution, right? All right, so we're back up here. Why do I not have any second, oh, there we go. So now I've got some second level connections. We'll look at just first and second level. All right, so here are the seven people that I'm connected to that have CEO on their profile, some level, that went to Longwood that are a connection of a connection. They're a weak tie. Let's pick one of these people. Sly. Sly, where's Sly? Sly's an awesome name. All right, Fly, Sly Barisic. So I can select him. And I can see uh, he was Longwood. He's also got a MBA from uh, Georgia. Uh, I can see he's posting some subject matter expertise, long form blogging. I can see how he got into founder and CEO, the steps that he took to get up there. If I scroll down a little bit further, I can see uh, what he's endorsed for. So it's a guy who's known for investments. Any, any of you guys want to start your own company at any point? If you did, this would be a good guy to talk to in the alumni network and his, his endorsements are showing that. I scroll down a little bit further I can see uh, the people who cross-connect me with him, uh, a couple people from the alumni world. Uh, Zorian is actually an investor in Boston that works with the organization that I'm at, Techstars. I know him well. I can see all the groups that he's joined. 
So I can see if there are some groups I might want to join based on what he's doing. Um, I can see the content that he's consuming. I can see the companies that he's following. I can see the schools that he went to, including Longwood. And what I can utilize is this connection or those connections that I share in common to connect into Sly. Ask them if they can help me out. I know them well at a first level. Can you introduce me to Sly? So here's what I would do if I were you guys. Um, and this is where I think a lot of communication falls down from a university student perspective. Um, what's the most effective way to communicate with somebody? Talk quietly. Say it loud. Face to face, right? Face to face? Right. What's the second most effective way to communicate with somebody? Phone to phone. What's the least effective way to communicate with somebody? Technology, right? What's your primary way of communicating with people right now? Technology, right? So you guys are taking the least effective way to get into folks that can help you out professionally. It is not easy picking up the phone and giving people a call you don't know. It'll give you butterflies in your stomach, right? I can tell you the first time I got on stage, it was not easy. I didn't even know what I was doing. Uh, I got nervous. I think I threw up uh, the night before just thinking about it. I was getting on stage in front of like 50 people. Um, that was 15 years ago or so. I have now given a thousand presentations. I can turn and give this presentation to the wall and I'd have an engaged audience. Like, I, it's practice and that's what it comes down to. And I'm gonna help you guys a little bit with how to craft the conversation. And I'm just gonna give you a framework, but you can take it and utilize it the way you're comfortable. So it's all about you being comfortable on the phone and getting through um, kind of that initial conversation with somebody. So if I were to reach out with Sly, I'm gonna play off University Connection, Longwood. Do you know why? Why would I play off University Connection? It's a strong connection. When I was at LinkedIn, we learned that there were four major affiliations that you can build a quality relational network that can accelerate communication to other people. The number one most effective um, group that you can connect to, affiliation you have, is friends and family. The problem with friends and family is a lot of times they're not aligned with what you do or their network isn't big enough to help you out. So there's nobody in my family who is a higher education evangelist or a network catalyst. Like They don't even understand what I do. So the second affiliation that I play off of, and it was the second most powerful affiliation on LinkedIn, is university affiliation. Longwood helping Longwood. Highly powerful affiliation. I'll tell you, most of your alumni don't even realize how powerful it is. They still lose it as they go in the professional world because they focus on the third one, which is shared work experience. How many of you guys have worked before? All right, people you've worked with, that's part of your network. Reach out to them if you had a strong relationship with them. The fourth affiliation is volunteerism causes awareness. If you focus on connecting with people who have those shared affiliations at a first level, you're gonna build a quality relational network. But I'm gonna play off university with this one for one specific reason. I think personally it's the most powerful one that you can leverage as you go through your career. And there's a reason for that. Um, you guys already are emotionally connected to here. If a student from the high school you came from were to reach out to you and say, hey, I want to learn a little bit more about your experience of Longwood, what it was like, by a show of hands, how many of you would take that call? And if you don't raise your hand, you're going to hell. <laughs> I'm just kidding. And I, 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 I um, obviously don't have that power, and I'm Irish Catholic, so I'm going to feel guilty about that for the next 24 hours. But almost all of you guys raise your hand. Right? So think about your alumni. If you reach out to them, they're likely to raise their hand by answering the phone or meeting you, with you in person. Is it an absolute? No. Does it increase the odds? And this is a percentage game, guys. Does it increase the odds that you can have a conversation with somebody? Absolutely. So let's start to get into Longwood a little bit deeper. And I'm going to show you one of the tools that we built. It's called the alumni tool. It shows alumni by uh, university by where they live, where they work, and what they do. They affectionately called it John Hill in a Box. It was based on some of the walkthroughs that I used to give with colleges and universities to students. So product team would come in and watch. And then they built this really awesome tool. So if I come up here uh, to my network, there's this little tool that says Find Alumni. It's going to show the university that you're attending right now. It'll show my university that I went to. I went to Michigan State University. And I can look at any one of 24,000 universities around the world. So I can change this to Longwood. And yours will say Longwood. 
I think you guys listed it as Richmond, Virginia. That's interesting. Uh, but 13,596 alumni that graduated from this institution are on LinkedIn. When I click on that, I can see the top 25 locations that people went post-graduation. So, or Charlotte. You guys see it? There we go. So you were asking about Charlotte earlier. There are 110 people who graduated from this university that live in Charlotte right now. I can see the top 25 places that they work. And this actually indexes against 8 million companies. So I can see every company that somebody from Longwood currently is in. And I can see the industries that they're in. So I can see where they went post-graduation. It's starting to shape what you guys can be. So name a city that you might want to live in. San Francisco, it's one near and dear to my heart. I lived there for a few years. All right, so if I come down here, 51 alumni in San Francisco, what do you want to do? And notice it changed where they work and what they do to reflect the alumni from Longwood that are in San Francisco. By the way, you've got folks at Facebook, if you didn't know that. What do you want to do? I want to work in the travel industry. I travel industry? <laughs> in what way? Technology? Um, I, I'm looking to work for Booking.com or Travel. Oh, okay. So like Orbitz or something like that? All right, cool. So there are two groups that we're going to focus on. We're going to look at, well, let's see. Mozilla. All right, we're going to focus on entrepreneurship and technology. These are going to be people who are plugged in in the Bay Area. So we're going to select information technology, and it'll reflect that on where they work. We're going to select entrepreneurship. We're going to select, what else should we do? Product management, be a good one. So Mozilla uh, would be a good place, but what I have now are the alumni that graduated from Longwood that are in San Francisco, that are in tech, that are in product management, that are in the areas that they may be networked to other people who could get me into an Orbitz or uh, Airbnb or whatever kind of company you want to work at post-graduation. Those are the network that you should start to focus on to start to break into the San Francisco market and you pick up the phone and give them a call. And the cool thing is, I've got their years of graduation. So for instance, this guy graduated in 78. I might be a little bit more comfortable talking to this person who graduated in 05. The other thing I can see is the connections that I share in common with these folks. So if I hover over this, I can see Lee connects me with Matt. And I can utilize Lee to get into Matt. One of the things that you guys can do immediately to kind of strengthen your networks is cross-connect with each other. You can help each other out because you're going to know somebody that she needs to access. You're going to know somebody that she needs to access. So can start to connect with other students on campus as much as possible. Um, but think about what I just showed you guys. All right, name me, somebody here doesn't know what they want to do post-graduation, right? Raise your hand if you don't know what you want to do post-graduation. All right, thank you for being brave. What are you studying? I'm undeclared. Undeclared? Yeah. So? I'm thinking about it, well, I'm like pretty sure I'm going to declare social work. Perfect. All right, watch this. This is a really cool tool that we built. So if I come back up here, I'm going to clear all these. We're going to look back at the 13,000 people that are in Longwood. If I hit this little arrow over here, see on the right-hand side, it's going to show me what they studied, what they're skilled at, and how I'm connected to people at Longwood. So you want to do social work. There are 278 people on LinkedIn that graduated in social work from Longwood. When I select that, it's going to re-index this so that I can go back here and see where those people work, where they live, and what they do. You have a map to the success patterns that people have already had with that major out of Longwood. You can see what you can become. And it's not limiting. You can do whatever you want. But it at least gives you a view of if you pick social work, this is what you can be. These are the people you should network with. Is there anything up there that looks of interest? Oh, no. All right, what if I pick something for you? How about Horizon Behavioral Health? I have no idea what that is. But no. All right. Let's pick. How about public schools? You want to help kids? No. All right. <laughs> Cool, cool. All right, we're going to stick with Horizon Behavioral Health. So again, 
And if I select this, I've got the two people who graduated from Longwood that work at that place. So why is it important for me to start to pick people who are, say, the companies I want? Any of you guys want to work in the tech industry? Well, you want to work at Airbnb or something along those lines, right? Anybody want to work at Google, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn? None of those? Tell me one of you dream company that you want to work at. You don't count. I want one of these guys to tell me. One of you guys has thought about working somewhere. Gloria. And you don't, perfect. All right. So um, by the way, we should talk afterwards. All right. <laughs> Whoops. L'Oreal. Okay, you have no alumni that are at L'Oreal. But, yeah, it's very true. Oh. You guys get your work cut out for you. They place them in some of these places. There we go. You got Ryan Wagner, who's a production engineer at Facebook. Say I wanted to work at Facebook. All right. We know we want to play off university affiliation. I'm going to give you guys the roadmap of what I would do if I were trying to work at Facebook using the Longwood um, alumni network. I would Google Ryan uh, to find a phone number. I promise you it's not stalking. Um, and I would pick up the phone and give him a call. If you're more comfortable with email, you can start the conversation there, but you're gonna use the same premise that I'm gonna to go to, all right? I'm gonna pick up the phone and say, hey Ryan, I'm a graduate of Longwood, or I'm a current student at Longwood, and I'm really interested in learning a little bit more about who you are and what you're about. I just wonder if you take a few minutes to talk to me about that. In that two sentence structure, you've done two very powerful things. Number one, you positioned him as the expert in himself. People love to be the experts in themselves. It's a conversation extender. Number two, you pay, played into the university affiliation, Longwood. Longwood helping Longwood. What are you guys, Lancers, right? Lancers, look at that. Lancers helping Lancers. Uh, I mean, like, it's the same reason you guys raised your hand, that it increases the odds that somebody like Ryan talks with you. Right, that's what we're trying to do, conversation extenders. Increase the opportunity to get into the back door of an organization. So I start that initial conversation, I go into the next thing. I ask him how he got his job at Facebook. Again, it's about him, it's a conversation extender. And he's giving you the pathway about how he got in. I ask him uh, what the work environment's like. So it allows him to tell me, um, you know, try in the suit before I even go into the company. Uh, I ask him what opportunities become available at Facebook. I'm not asked for a job specifically, don't do that but I am asking him to give me an idea of what kind of opportunities may be available. At the end of the conversation, I would do one of a couple things. I'd ask him, hey, would you mind if I passed you along my resume or uh, my LinkedIn profile? If I ask that question, there are four things he can do. Number one, absolutely nothing. Does that hurt you at all? No. Number two, he can share it with his network. He's in San Francisco at Facebook. Who has Ryan networked with? Other uh, people who work in technology or social in San Francisco. You want to break into Facebook, gives you an opportunity to break into some of those other organizations. Number three, he's sitting in a meeting. Somebody says, hey, we want to hire somebody. Um, we're looking for this skill set. You've had the conversation with him. You meet some of the criteria for the role. He says, I got the perfect person. Happened to talk to a student at Longwood. I think they'd be good. Just tapping into the hidden job market. Number four though, and this is the most important thing, and it's a lesson I learned as the Director of Alumni Career Services at Michigan State University. Um, I was in that role during the recession, and it was really tough to get in the front door because so many people were trying to go in the front door to get the job. It allows you to get in the back door. He takes your resume down to HR. What does that do for your chances of getting a job in that organization? Go way up. If you become an internal referral, 
your chances of getting looked at go way up. Now, all the old rules in the job search still apply. You got to be able to position yourself in an elevator pitch, be articulate on the value proposition you bring into the organization. You've got to be able to do the interview. But it at least gives you a leg up. And that's what we're trying to do. It's just increase the odds that you can get into where you guys want to go. All right, pretty cool, right? All right, let's take a little bit different look. Ryan, what are some of the companies you guys penetrate pretty well? I'd say we do really well at um, some of the Richmond companies like Capital One. Okay. Okay, we'll look at CarMax, we'll start there. Um, all right, I'm gonna select this company and I'm gonna show you guys a little hack on LinkedIn that you can use. If I select this and then turn around and just do a blank search, it's gonna show me all eight million companies that have a profile on LinkedIn. So this is every company globally that has a presence on LinkedIn. And then I can search from a region or uh, specific category or, or um, uh, company size, all sorts of different things. But I'm going to look at CarMax. And you can see um, I've got a listing, and if I scroll down on this, it gives me a description of what CarMax is. Uh, I can see what they're talking about. These are updates made by the companies. So they're giving me an idea of what uh, the company culture is through content something I can review before I start to talk to people there. And what am I going to do before I pick up the phone and give anybody a call at any company? Uh, research. research, right? I'm going to learn as much as I can. If I look down on the right, I can see I have 42 second level connections, connection of a connection, weak ties that are there. So I've got a lot of inroads through relationships that I can get into CarMax. If I go down a little bit further, on the right hand side, Every time somebody visits a page and visits another page, LinkedIn calculates how similar those organizations are based on people viewing company pages. These are the six companies that LinkedIn feels are most similar to CarMax. Now, Tria, I wouldn't say is one of those, or Bed Bath & Beyond, but there's some search patterns that are happening around CarMax. So it gives you an idea of some other places you could work if you were really zeroed in on one place. So like L'Oreal will have S.A. Lauder and all the other uh, companies. It gives you a, a range of companies you can look at. Now, if I come up here and click on this, I can see every employee that works at CarMax right now. 6,800 employees. What's our major affiliation? Longwood, right? So now I can go down to university. Select Longwood. And I've got the 20 people that graduated from Longwood that work at CarMax right now. I have 20 people I can reach out to and play off university affiliation to create an opportunity for myself. That's pretty amazing, guys. Like, that wasn't available when I was coming out of school. I couldn't view this type of information. You guys have this at the ready. This is the kind of stuff you use. Now, I'm gonna tell you like a little secret. This is not metric at all, so this isn't like real science, but I feel like there are five different um, job types, people, in companies that are best at getting you internally referred. There are people in communication, marketing, social, business development, and sales. If you reach out to alumni in those categories in a company and they like you, they sell messaging for a living. If they like you, they will be effective at selling you internally. Again, doesn't guarantee that you get an interview or a job, but it increases the odds that you get accelerated within those organizations. That's a cool thing. All right, so we could focus on those people. Now, here's another little hack that a lot of people are unaware of, but I think is really cool. I can look at people who used to work at CarMax. So we'll go up here, select used to, and their current company will do all. Here are the 27 people, and some of them have moved up, but for instance, Suzanne, is the senior sales executive at Coca-Cola North American Group, graduated from Longwood, used to work at CarMax. If I pick up the phone and give her a call, she doesn't have a dog in the fight anymore. She doesn't work at CarMax. She'll tell me everything about CarMax, good, bad, and indifferent. She'll tell me the right people to connect with within the company that could help me out. Uh, she can give me advice about what the work environment's like, what the jobs are like, how to position myself in the interview process. This is called due diligence. 
we actually work with our companies, our tech companies, as they're trying to work with major corporations to do this type of work. It allows you guys to figure out the right people that are most likely to help you internally within an organization based on referrals from your alumni base. Great audience to attach into. So I'm gonna take you on a back end on a couple other things that we built. Oops. For you guys, this is gonna be under interest. I get beta tested on things. So it's under education. Um, give me another major in this room. Computer science, are you computer science? Good job. All right, so if I select this, I can look at any major that is uh, cataloged um, globally, and there's computer science. So these are based on all profiles on LinkedIn. There are 3.2 million people who have graduated in computer science and I can see what they do, what companies they work for, what universities they went to, it starts to break out what job opportunities are, are available for me if I graduate with that major. So this is the world in computer science. It's pretty cool. It's aspirational. You can see anything you want to do. Half those people worked with me right there. All right. We're going to go back up here, though, and I'm going to show you another tool for you guys because I'm not going to be able to cover this all. And we have, like, what, two more hours? I'm just kidding. Uh, all right, so for all of you, see this little university tab over here? I want you to follow through with this because I don't, I don't want you guys to lose this. If you click on this and go down here, there's a Higher Education Resource Center. If you click on Learn More, there's a tab for you up top and one for students. I want you guys to look at the for you one first. This is for career practitioners, so these are for those guys. Um, these are guides on how to navigate LinkedIn effectively as a student. So we have things like building a great profile, LinkedIn hidden gems, using the alumni tool, advanced search tips. If you click on these, these are eight minute videos of me while I was at LinkedIn. I should get paid for this, but I don't. But these are still there. Uh, these can help you guys on all the areas that I haven't been able to touch on today because there's too much content to cover in an hour. Um, but you go through here, I can walk you step by step on how to build an effective profile on this. Now, on the for student side, we actually created metrics for you guys. And if you come back up here, we have a LinkedIn profile checklist, building your professional brand, um, the, LinkedIn prof or the LinkedIn alumni tool. Um, all these are pretty good. These are videos on the right hand side. This is good stuff for you guys to consume just to see how LinkedIn was positioning how you can find a career or job post-graduation. So I'm gonna show you one last thing and then I'm gonna back out. Uh, jobs, the most important thing. Name another city you might wanna work in. Boston. Huh? Boston. Boston, you already answered. Somebody who hasn't answered, somebody who's shy, who's gonna to have to pick up the phone one day and call somebody. Richmond, all right. What do you want to do? All right. So let's get up here, and we're going to go to jobs. It's going to default to where you originated your, or where you live. So Richmond, Virginia, and we want graphic design. So here are the 30 positions that are there. And again, for every one of these, if I click on, let's just do Capital One. It'll tell me how many people from my school work there. It'll give me a description of the job. It'll tell me how many applicants uh, are there, how many views this role is ha has, so I can start to see um, who I'm competing against. It'll give me similar roles. And actually, this one at Chegg, which happens to be in Santa Clara, I know the guy who uh, posted it. So I can start to use my personal relationships to help me get into jobs. So that alumni tool I showed you guys, you need probably 20 connections through the university to make it effective. So connect with 20 people at Longwood, you're good. And then keep building from there. But that's the start. 
that advanced search that I showed you to kind of start to look at things globally, you need about 50 connections. That's it. That's not a lot. And it gives you a pretty good view of how you can get from a first level connection to a second level connection for opportunity. Um, one last thing that I'll share with you guys, because I think it's important. There's a tool at the free level you can see five people. It's called Who's Viewed Your Profile. If you come up here, you can see all the people who have looked at your profile. Hello. Ashley's here, right? Oh, I don't like Ashley right now. I'm going to delete her. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, so um, you can see all the people who are looking at your profile. There are a couple different ways to use this. Um, who should be looking at my profile? I work with tech companies. I'm in entrepreneurship. I worked in social media. I worked with higher education folks. Who should be looking at my profile? People who represent that, right? If I look at this and I notice that those people aren't looking at my profile, it means I need to change some of the content on my profile because it's not reaching the audience I'm trying to reach. They're not connecting with me that way. Now the other thing I can use this for, say, um, I don't know who Juan is, but say I interviewed with Juan for a job uh, yesterday. And today I noticed he looked at my profile. What does that tell you? He's interested, he wouldn't look otherwise. For the first time in history, you guys have indicators, and it's not an absolute, not everybody's gonna look at your profile, sometimes they're blocked, but for the first time in history, you have an indicator of somebody's interest of you as a candidate. Like, that's highly powerful, guys. That allows you to take additional action, another thank you note, or another reminder that you have interest in that position, because they took action on you. Pretty cool, right? All right, I'm gonna show you very quickly one other tool that I want you to utilize for accentuation if you want. It's called Conspire. Um, Conspire actually validates the relationships you have in between people through email. So um, it shows you who's communicated with folks in your network. Uh, I absolutely love this tool. Um, they now have the ability to showcase how you connect with 87 million people through actual email introduction. So whereas LinkedIn, if I connect with you and you're connected with her, I can't always tell how deep your relationship is with her. This tool allows me to do that. Any of you guys heard of Elon Musk before? Tesla, yeah, it's a pretty big deal. Uh, SpaceX sends rockets into space. I can use this to see how I'm connected to Elon Musk. So if I type in here, oops. What it's gonna do is it's gonna show me the connection to Elon Musk here. So this is his actual relationship. It'll show me his Twitter account, Facebook, I can see what he's talking about, his work history. And then it's gonna to start to show me the people in my network who I communicate with through email who connect me with him. So David Cohen is my boss. He's the guy who started Techstars, the organization I work with right now. We talk all the time. Uh, David talks to Jason quite a bit. So this is a signal on how much communication is happening here. Uh, Jason talks to Elon Musk often. So I've got a pathway to get into Elon Musk through relationships. Now, remember we went to first, second, third level connection? Um, I don't know Jason, Jason doesn't know me. So I don't know if he would accelerate me into Elon Musk. But I have a connection of a connection. I have a weak tie that gets me into him. So I do tech conferences, I build large conferences on an annual basis, so I have to get speakers from all over the world. I've had some very unique speakers at some of these conferences. One of them is a guy by the name of Brent Bushnell. He uh, has created a uh, roving circus called Two-Bit Circus. It's essentially the circus for today. He utilizes technology as the entertainment piece uh, for crowds, for audiences. So instead of animals, it's the tech. It's pretty cool. Um, I had him speak at our conference last year. We helped each other out. And it just so happens that Brent is directly connected to Elon Musk. Now, they don't talk a lot. I don't talk with Brent a lot, but he knows him. And I know Brent well. I could pick up the phone and say, hey, could you introduce me to Elon? 100% that it would work? No, but I do know that he talks with and communicates with him. So it's just another tool in your arsenal that you guys can utilize as you go along. And I want to go back to what I said at the beginning. Like, I think about my dad's pathway. It was remarkable what he did. Uh, all of us kids try to live up to what he was able to accomplish. Never will fully reach that uh, because it was pretty aspirational for a guy from South Boston, from Stab and Kill, uh, to figure out his way out. 
uh, and then provide the opportunities that we've had, which we will always benefit from. Um, he had the audacity to dream big and made it happen. Every one of you guys has that ability. And these tools can help you get there, but um, don't let anything slow you down. Jump off cliffs as much as possible. Those jumps feel less and less as you go. I moved my whole family uh, from Michigan to Silicon Valley to go work at LinkedIn on an initiative that could have died at any moment. And we ended up being successful and lucked out. And then I jumped again and moved from California to Boston. And again, jumping off cliff with your whole family, not an easy thing. You guys can take big risks right now. And from a professional perspective, the more you take those risks, the more opportunities will open up for you down the road. Uh, if nothing else, take away from this that you guys have relational capital that you can tap into that will help you out. Use it. So I want you guys to absolutely dream big. I appreciate you guys being here because I know it's like drifting into late afternoon and what is it, a Thursday night? I don't even know what day it is. Is it Thursday? Yeah, wow. Uh, anyway, um, Thursday night, right? It's like drifting into the weekend. You could let your attention go into different directions and you came here. That's pretty telling. Um, you know, keep reaching, guys. And I appreciate you having me here and I wish you all the best in your endeavors as you go forward. So thank you.